Hi everyone, Tom Wolf here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this emotive soundscape in Omnisphere. A mod wheel. Okay, so as you can hear, we've got this really kind of ethereal, ambient and quite emotive soundscape. It's got this air of mystery to it. And it's one that works particularly great, especially kind of layered uh, with pianos or strings um, to create really kind of emotive cinematic cues. So this is a preset from my latest sound bank for Omnisphere called Lunnan. So let's have a look at how to create it. Right, so the first thing to notice is that we've got Omnisphere set into shared signal path mode. Now, if you're not familiar with this, uh, this is something that was introduced in Omnisphere 2.5, uh, which was, I think, a couple of years ago now. Um, and, you know, traditionally in Omnisphere, for each layer, you would have its own filter, its own envelopes, its own effects section. When they introduced the shared signal path, what this did was it basically groups up certain uh, parts of the signal chain. So we still have our individual oscillators in each of the layers, but each of the layers actually share the filter, they share the envelopes, they share the amp, and they also share the effects as well. So you see if I click that, it's grouped all the layers. So you basically have four slots for the entire kind of group of layers. But this is a really great way of being able to control the whole thing without having to, you know, tweak too many filters, too many envelopes. And if you don't need that uh, individual control over each layer, then this can be a really good way of creating stuff. And it makes it a bit more like a traditional kind of synth. So starting with layer A, we've got the synth engine selected and we've got this waveform called the Moog Modular Sine and Triangle Wave. Uh, that's in classic waveforms and it's under Triangle and Sine. So you see that just here. So firstly, let's look at our envelopes. So as I mentioned, these are shared envelopes. So this is the envelope uh, that's going to be across all of our layers. So because we want it to be quite slowly evolving uh, on our amp envelope, we've got quite a long attack there, 4.77 seconds. We've got sustain all the way up to the top. And then we've got quite a long release as well, just under two seconds there. We've also got it set to halfway on the velocity. So, you know, are playing our velocity on the keyboard is going to affect the volume of the sound. So the next thing you'll notice is our shape control here. So with this particular waveform, as it says here, it's a sine and a triangle wave. So when the shape is all the way over to the left, you can see we've got our sine wave and all the way over to the right, we've got our triangle wave. So this is just under halfway, it was about here. So it's, you know, somewhere between a sine and a triangle. It's not either, but it's a little way between both. And that sounds like this. So it does have the sound of a triangle wave. It's got that very soft sound, but with a little bit of buzz on the top. Um, so we're then going to switch on the unison. OK, so we'll switch that on. And you can see here we've got the detune set to 0.073. We've got it set to fine mode. Uh, we've got the analog a little way up and the drift just a tiny little bit there. We've got spread all the way up and we've just got the depth all the way down to the bottom actually there. So. You can hear that, it's just kind of bringing in a little bit of warmth and stereo spread to it there. Okay, so then we're going to switch on the filter. Because we're in shared signal path mode, we are sharing this filter across our different layers. Okay, so we're just going to have the one filter. So at the moment you can see we've got it set to modified. So if we open that up, We've got it set to parallel and in filter one, we've got a UVI two um, and in filter two, we've got a band pass juicy 24 dB. OK, so we've got the mix set to uh, just slightly over to filter one. Um, we've got the cutoff offset set quite high on filter two and the resonant offset set up quite a bit as well. So basically what this is going to be doing is it's also going to be giving us a little bit of that kind of band pass buzz. So if I remove the band pass. We've just got our low pass UVI2 here. If I remove that, 
we get that brightness so it's just kind of cutting off that top buzziness there but then if we bring in the band pass as well just the band pass we're getting that kind of middly bit there just got a bit of buzziness to it so it's just kind of bringing in a little bit of edge to the sound there uh, you can see down here we've got a cutoff set quite low and we have no resonance on this at all but we've got the envelope set to all the way on so the envelope is going to be fully controlling the filter and if we have a look at our filter envelope we've got the attack set very high so it's going to be really slowly evolving we've got the sustain down just a little bit and we've got a really long decay here almost 20 seconds and then we've got a really long release as well so this is a very slowly evolving sound um, we've also got the velocity control set all the way up to the top so that this is going to be heavily controlled by how heavy we play our keyboard. So let's have a little look at layer B. So we'll switch off layer A for now. You can see on layer B we've got synth engine selected again and we've got it set to this waveform called Comb Party. So that is in the digital wavetables and it's in the overtones section right here. Um, we've already looked at the filter, we've already looked at the envelopes because they're, you know, the same ones because it's in shared signal path mode so we can turn the filter off just so we get the full sound of this okay so you can hear we've got this quite sharp waveform there Okay. You can also see that we're controlling our shape here with some modulation. So if we look at that, you'll see we've got LFO1 and LFO3 controlling this. So let's start off with LFO1. Okay, so you can see here LFO1, uh, we've got it muted at the moment, so we'll just open that up. And um, we've got it set to a sine wave. We've got it set to unipolar, so it's only going to be opening up from this point, going this way. Uh, we have got it synced, and it's currently synced to eight bars. So across eight bars, this is going to cycle. So that is literally just going to sweep this wavetable and you can hear that now. So there we go, over time that just gets a bit brighter. Um, but then we've also got this other LFO controlling it. So if we go to LFO3, you'll see on LFO3 we've got it set to random um, and we've got it set to unipolar again and synced and this time it's synced to an eighth note. So this is going to be moving quite quickly. So if we unmute that, There you go, you can hear it kind of randomly bringing in that brightness. And if we actually, uh, if we mute the other one, just so you can hear just this control. It's just changing it slightly over time and giving it a little bit of interest to it. And obviously, you know, um, because it's randomized, it is creating it different every time and it's creating it quite unique. So that's got this really of interesting quality to it over time we can then also add our filter back in we can just kind of hear it delicately morphing over time there so then let's have a look at layer c so again we'll switch the filter off so that we can hear the oscillator here uh, again we've got it set to synth we've got it set to sick pitch uh, which again is in the digital wave tables and it's in the overtones and again, we're controlling our shape here as well. So we show that we've got LFO2 and LFO3. So it's being controlled by the same randomized LFO as the layer B. So we're still getting that slightly randomized moving to the sound, which is just giving us a little bit of interest. And then we've got LFO2 as well, which is essentially doing the same thing as LFO1 on layer B, but it's cycling over a longer time. So you can see our rate here is set to cycle over 16 bars. So it's actually cycling over twice the length uh, of our LFO1 is on layer B, but it's still giving us that kind of morphing over time and gradually changing the sound. So if we just have a listen to that, we can mute our random as well so this one gets really bright and shrill over time and then we can bring in our filter and that's pretty much going to remove it because that was all just top there <laughs> and then we can bring in our other layers as well because we've now got the full sound So 
so it's quite delicate but it's got just a little bit of brightness to it which is coming from those wavetables and because we've got those kind of randomized LFOs and that sweeping that's happening on the wavetable uh, it's giving us lots of movement it's giving us interest in the sound it's preventing it from being too bland and too boring over time so we can have these nice slowly evolving uh, notes that we're playing here and that's kind of helps it to be quite emotive and sort of mysterious as well But as you can hear, we're not quite there yet. So most of the rest of the sound comes from our effects. So we're going to come over to our effects here and we'll start with our layer effects. As I've already mentioned, again, shared signal path mode. So we've literally just got this one set of effects going across all of the layers that we've got here. So firstly, we've got a studio EQ. And this is just to take out a little bit of low frequency. We've got the frequency set to 129 um, and we've got the gain set to minus 3.2 dB. So that's just going to be knocking out a little bit of the kind of lower end that we're getting from that triangle wave. Uh, we've then also got an ultra chorus as well. So we've got the mix set to 0.3, so not very high. Uh, we've got the rate set to 0.152 hertz. We've got the depth quite high. The delay quite low is set to linear shape. We've got lush set to on. And that's just going to give us a bit of chorusy warmth there. There we go. So it's giving us a bit of warmth um, and, you know, starting to bring us more to this sort of ambient uh, soundscape thing that we're going for. So over on our common effects, we've got a flame distortion unit. OK, so we we'll switch that on and you can see at the moment our mix is set to zero. Um, this is being controlled by an LFO. So that's LFO4 and we'll come over here. LFO4 is set to a random waveform. Again, we've got it set to unipolar and it's synced and it is synced to a uh, eighth note. So this is essentially working the same as our LFO3 does on our actual wavetables, but because it's randomized, um, the nice thing about it is that <laughs> I didn't want, if we just used the one LFO, say we just used LFO3 as a random waveform, our flame distortion would be brought in when our wavetables are being morphed by that random LFO, which isn't necessarily what I wanted. Because it is a random LFO, although they've got exactly the same settings uh, between the two different LFOs, because it's random, it is going to move differently to LFO3. So it's not going to be doing the flame distortion at the same time as the wavetables are morphing, which is important for this sound. So let's unmute that. And you can see it's just kind of bringing in our mix a little bit. And we've got the pre-gain set to about two thirds, a uh, little bit of filter there. We've got the driver set to heat, and then we've got a little bit more gain on the post and we've got it filtered a little bit there as well, low pass filter. So you can hear what that's doing here. So it's just kind of bringing in a little bit of little bit of grit, a little bit of dirt to the sound, making it a little bit less clean. Which I feel kind of adds to that kind of emotion of it. Um, you don't want it to be too kind of pristine. You want it to have a little bit rough around the edges. Okay, so we're going to ignore the imager for now. Um, you'll notice here we've got our aux send turned up. So we're going to come over to our aux and I'll turn the aux return all the way up as well. So firstly on our aux, we've got analog chorus. The mix is set to about halfway here. Um, we've got the rate set to about a third of the way up, the depth set to half. And then we've got it set to the bossy five chorus ensemble mode. So that is going to add a little bit of chorus to our auxiliary here and then we've got the proverb so this is obviously a big part of creating that ambient sound and it's something that i use on a lot of my presets we've got the mix set to 100 percent, so this auxiliary is just going to be a reverb there's no dry signal coming through uh, we've got the size set to 40 we've got the time set really high so it's a really long delay not a lot of pre-delay there uh, we've got the density set all the way up and then over here we've got uh, quite high kind of reverb shaping in the low end, quite long uh, reverb time in the low end under 654 hertz there um, and we've got the diffusion set all the way up as well. So that gives us that really nice long 
ethereal reverb that's happening there, which just goes on forever. Fantastic. So the last thing to show you, as you can see, we've got another image here. This is our sort of tremolo on our mod wheel. So I've showed this quite a few times in my other videos if you've watched any of them. So what I do is I don't actually use the imager to control anything to do with the actual uh, stereo field. I'm not changing the width. I'm not changing the panning. All I'm doing is using it as a utility to control the gain. So on the gain here, you can see that we've got that modulated and we've got it being controlled by LFO5. So on LFO5, you'll see we've got it set to a sine wave. We've got it set to unipolar, so it's only going to be turning the volume down. And we've got it synced, which it is synced to 16th notes. Okay, so quite a quick LFO. And you can see for the moment that our depth is turned all the way down. So we're still not going to be able to hear that. Um, let's come over to our common. And we'll switch on that imager as well. And again, we've got our gain control here. Um, and that is also being modulated by LFO5. So we'll unmute that. So we're still not going to be able to hear that. Because we've got our depth being controlled by our mod wheel. Okay, so we'll unmute that. And our mod wheel is literally turning that depth all the way up. So when we open our mod wheel, we're going to be getting that tremolo effect on the volume. which I find is always nice to be able to sort of mix it in with your playing. Okay, so there you have the preset morning reflection. Hopefully you found this video interesting and you enjoy creating this sound. And as I say every time, you know, experiment with it. Try changing the different waveforms. Try changing the modulation. Uh, maybe change the waveforms in the LFOs. Play about with it. See what you can kind of create with this sound because you can use this as a foundation to create other similar sounds. You don't necessarily have to use it just to use this particular sound. If you enjoyed the preset and you'd like to check out more in a similar style, then please do check out uh, my Soundbank London. Uh, you'll find a link to it in the description if you're on YouTube. It contains a hundred patches in a sort of British cinematic style. It was inspired by uh, British television shows such as Broadchurch and Marcella. So check it out if you feel inclined to. Also if you'd like to up your sound design game then there's a link in the description to take you to my website where you can sign up to get these tutorials through to your inbox. Um, I do them every now and then and it's a really good way of just being able to kind of improve your sound design game and start thinking outside the box when you are creating sounds. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of these videos, please do do that. Uh, also, don't forget to hit subscribe and then you will be able to get these videos to your YouTube as well as uh, walkthroughs for my presets. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.